Hi, Jerry Jessica. Hi, Ron. Nice to see you. Such a pleasure. So I am about to embark on a year-long journey across America called Retail in America. What I think is so exciting about retail that is specific to cities is that we are all unique. Everybody is going to have a really, I think, really special story. But New York is special because it tends to be where people come to take the biggest chance to hope to, you know, swing a home run. It's a city that lets you know very quickly where you stand. I took that big swing eight years ago and mm -hmm. moved here for a job and it changed my life. This good. city changed my life oh, in good. the most positive way. It inspired oh, this book. Despite kind of being birthed, you know, in the age of e-com, our first instinct and really what we kind of put all our resources into was brick and mortar. The relationship with the customer, the engagement, the kind of, you know, what you learn from talking to somebody, from hearing what their life is, what they need versus what they want. It's been for sure the most joyous part of the work. It's been the thing that I love best. Having the keys to the shop and being able to like open the door and be at the till and welcome somebody in and be on the ground and throwing a bunch of like ideas in front of them and fitting them and running back up to the stock room. It's like immediate satisfaction even if you don't make a sale it's human engagement yeah you hear that bell of someone coming in yeah. or you're having a conversation on the floor and you're it's it's connection yeah and we crave that yeah in the last couple of years yes. we didn't have that opportunity yeah and i often have said you know retail is the forum that's reconnecting the world Definitely. because it's not it's not hotels it may not be restaurants retail doesn't require a purchase Right. It just requires a conversation. Yeah. And that is a really beautiful way to think about this business, about brick and mortar all over the world in this yeah. country. We're reconnecting the world. And I feel like you, yeah. it sounds like you feel similarly. Can we speak about technology for a moment? Sure. I think part, part of the joy of human connection is using tools to help us be better at it. Yeah. And so whether it's technology, so here you use a POS system with KWI. Yeah. In terms of the business, obviously we have so, some social media channels and in particular Instagram is sure. really our, where we focus most of our attentions. Can I speak for a moment about Retail Pride? No matter your role in retail, from founder to part-time sales, stock, if you lead with empathy and you're highly curious and you're focused to get whatever it is you need to accomplish done, that you can win in this business. Well, I think curiosity and empathy are not unrelated to each other because by being curious, you cultivate empathy. One of the things that I love about the store, people walk in the store from all over the world all over the world and their lives are radically different than mine and you can not even talk about the product right. but they're here because of the product right. and then you're just talking and we want to you know where are you from what are you doing oh my gosh why are you in the city it's really amazing we all have that experience we've all had it you're right it is it's a safe space so we can't sit in the store today and not talk about shoes. I do remember as a child, when I lived in Cincinnati, there was a retailer of Buster Brown shoes, mm. and we would go at the top of the school year, we would get a pair of saddle oxfords, yeah. and then in the spring, we would get a different pair, but I would just be walking around smelling shoes like literally lifting up, but I but I love the smell of them, but I also love the stitching on the bottom because if you remember for those shoes, it was a very wide kind of block heel yeah. Yeah. and you could see the stitching in the leather underneath the bottom of these shoes and they were beautiful. They weren't the shoes that I even wanted really because of course I wanted what everybody else was wearing, which was not a saddle, mm -hmm. but I love them and I love being there and it was air conditioned and they were so nice and they knew our family, you know, like, we came twice a year, it was like a big deal. I also wore hand-me-downs, but then we were responsible for polishing our shoes every Sunday. Every Sunday we got the newspaper out, we got the kiwi out, we were taught how to polish, buff, shine, and we did it every Sunday night. When I came to New York and, and I would look in the window of some amazing 
most of them were, not all of them, some of them, I would say maybe 60% European shoe designers and the rest were American shoe designers and I just loved it. But I probably, I mean, I, you know, bought and loved shoes before I played Carrie Bradshaw, who has a very different relationship with shoes than I have, but it wasn't as fevered. Like I would buy shoes when I could afford them, I would buy shoes. Sometimes that would last forever, but sometimes they were of a moment. But I think just wearing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pairs of shoes, you learn a lot. And that was obviously the fashion, but also the artistry, the, the tools. Well, yeah, I guess I do. It's not that I felt like I was deserving or ready, but I certainly realized I was like, well, I do, I have spent a lot of time. <laughs> I've worn a lot of shoes, <laughs> yeah. So I should know something. Um, but I want to be respectful of your time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for following Retail in America. Pleasure. Like, just, Good luck. Right, Have a wonderful you. time. Thank you.